Here we're gonna look at a nice problem that was inspired really from two places, probably originally from Fermat's last theorem, and then it also appeared on the shortlist for the International Math Olympiad from 1997. So here's the setup. We want to have natural numbers A, B, and C satisfying the following condition. So GCD of A and B is equal to GCD of A with C, which is equal to one. So in other words, A and B are relatively prime and A and C are also relatively prime. And what we wanna do is prove that there are infinitely many triples X, Y, Z, which are natural numbers, such that x to the a plus y to the b is equal to z to the c. Okay, so notice that this does look like something like Fermat's last theorem, but obviously there the exponents are all the same, but here we have the exponents. Not only are they different, but they satisfy this condition right here. Okay, so let's maybe see what we can get out of this condition first and then maybe see if we can guess and check some sort of family of solutions. So let's maybe first notice that if the GCD of A and B is equal to one, then that means there exists infinitely many numbers M and N, which are natural numbers, such that we have M A minus N B is equal to one. So this is like a standard fact from number theory, um, which is related to something called Bezu's lemma. So I'll let you guys check that, but that should be something that is fairly familiar for these contest type problems. But then furthermore, since the GCD of A with C is equal to one, but now using this fact, what we can do is find an additional number R such that we have M A minus R times C is equal to one. So that's also related to Bezu's lemma. So let's see what we have at the moment. We have infinitely many triples and those triples are M N R such that these two equations are satisfied. So we have M A minus N B is equal to one, and then M A minus R times C is equal to one. Okay, so let's maybe bring that fact to the top and then we can start constructing some solutions. So on the last board using Bezu's lemma, we constructed an infinite family of solutions to these equations. So we've got infinitely many triples, MNR satisfying MA minus NB equals one and MA minus RC equals one. So by just like simple arithmetic, that's the same thing as saying that MA is equal to NB plus one and MA minus one is equal to RC. Furthermore, we know that NB is equal to RC, kind of putting all of this together. Next, we would like to have very simple solutions to this. So I bet there's a bunch of different families of solutions, but if we can find a simple family of solutions, then we're probably good to go. So maybe let's have that be our goal, is to find the simplest family of solutions. So in my mind, the simplest family of solutions would be the one where X and Y are both powers of the same number. So X equals P to the, I'll just put a box here, and then Y equals also P, and I'll just put a box here, and we just have to figure out what to fill in with those boxes. And now looking back at our original equation, we see that we have X to the A, and we have Y to the B. So that really provides us some motivation since we're exponentiating this to A, that means we're exponentiating this to A. We're exponentiating this to B, that means we're exponentiating this to B. Now we've got some motivation for what we should plug into these boxes given these equations up here. So perhaps we should plug an M into this box and perhaps we should plug an N into that box. So let's see if that works out. So let's say that X is equal to P to the M, and let's say that Y is equal to P to the N. 
Now let's see what that gives us. So that's gonna give us x to the a plus y to the b is equal to p to the m a plus p to the n b. But next, we can use the fact that m a is equal to n b plus one. So we can write this as p to the n b plus one plus p to the n b. We can go ahead and factor a p to the n b out of this. That'll give us p to the n b and then p plus one. Great, and then finally, we can replace NB with RC. That will give us P to the RC times P plus one. Now we get to the point where we need to choose P carefully. So notice this is like for some unknown P at the moment. So let's say maybe if we choose Q in N to be arbitrary and then set P equal to Q to the C minus one, notice that that is equivalent to saying that Q to the C is equal to P plus one. So here we took just a random value q and we constructed our p out of it. But notice that we constructed our p out of it so that we include this power of c which is good news for what we have down here. So let's see that we can write this as p to the rc times q to the c but that's equal to p to the r times q all to the c power. But now that's equal to z to the c power if we go up here and define z by q by, by p to the r times q. Okay, so let's reiterate what we did right here. So using the fact that a and b and a and c are relatively prime, we found infinitely many triples, m, n, and r, satisfying these two equations. And then next, we took an arbitrary q, which was a natural number, and then we set p equal to the c power of q minus one. That makes p plus one equal to q to the c, Next, we can make these following three definitions for x, y, and z. And then we finally notice that those definitions for x, y, and z satisfy our goal equation. But since we had infinitely many choices up here for m, n, and r, that means that there are infinitely many values of x, y, and z satisfying this blue underlined equation. And that's a good place to stop.